Rafael Nadal has done it again. The King of Clay has won his record 11th title in Paris this year, defeating Dominique Team in straight sets. Final score 6-4, 6-3, 6-2. Congratulations to Nadal. He is the undisputed King of Clay, the greatest player on the red dirt that ever has existed probably now and forever. Congrats to Rafa. I'm happy and satisfied about this match because the best player on the court won, and that was Rafael Nadal. Now, at the beginning of the clay season, I made a prediction, and the prediction was that Dominique Team would be the number one contender against Nadal on clay this season, and that prediction, at least, did bear itself out team was there in the final contending against Nadal and did the best he could. I also made a prediction that Dominique team would win the French Open this year. Now on its face that prediction was not correct but I made a few assumptions <laughs> that I based that prediction on. My assumption was that Dominique team would continue to deliver the level of play in the final that he did in the previous two weeks at this tournament. And Dominique team did not do that. I want to talk about team's performance today. I do think that luck was favoring Rafa a bit in this match, but for the most part, Rafael Nadal put on an amazing show today and really saved the best for last. He played, I think, better today than he played in the entire tournament. So once again, credit to Nadal, the undisputed king of clay, a legend, Rafael Nadal, a true champion who delivered in spades today, and I want to talk about that. Subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. This is Tennis Talk Daily. In the end, the conditions, the weather conditions, favored Nadal. It was relatively low humidity. There was dry conditions, and the bounces were coming up high and giving Dominique Team, who is not a super tall guy, some trouble. The first set was actually fairly competitive, which is surprising because Team's numbers, his stats in this set, were so disappointing and nothing even approaching what he was producing earlier in the week. Well, there was an early exchange of breaks, and the trend was that team was struggling to hold serve. Rafa was driving him to deuces and into deuce cycles. I said that luck favored Nadal a little bit. Well, at 2-3 in the first set, with team serving, it was 40-30, game point, and Rafa hit a forehand that landed out. Well, I believe the shot was called out and then the umpire overruled it. But then the Hawkeye showed that the ball was in fact out. Well, that's a bit of luck when a point that should be yours goes against you because the procedure of the tournament is to not use the Hawkeye team did eventually squeeze out a hold and it was quite amazing that team was able to fight to four games to five in the first set. Well, why was it amazing? Because again, team's numbers were just abysmal. He was getting only 45% of his first serves in. Again, there was no precedent for that this week. He was winning only 57% of his first serve points. He was winning merely 43% of his second serve points. On return points, again, no precedent for such low numbers in the last couple of weeks. Team was winning only 31% of his return points points. He made 18 unforced errors. Again, it was surprising that he was able to fight back, break back early, and then fight up to four games to five. Well, that was the key game. Team made a number of errors in the first point of that last game of the first set with team serving at 4-5. 
team missed a volley, and that moment seemed so pivotal. And then he basically just gave the set to Rafa with a number of unforced errors. Well, Rafa snatched the first set, and as I said in my last couple of episodes, team really needed to win that first set. So it was basically over after the first set, after Rafa took the first set. And he did, once again, as he did to Del Potro, he basically stole the first set. Credit to Rafa for coming up with this, but again, it was based in large part on team's errors, beginning with that terrible missed volley in the first point of that pivotal game. Well, in the second set, team's numbers improved. He was getting 78% of his first serves in, winning 68% of his first serves, and winning 50% of his second serves. But his return game is what was suffering. He was winning only 32% of his return points. Meanwhile, Rafa was sort of stepping it up Anything that team produced, and he was producing some real brilliance, some fantastic shot making, but everything that he was producing was coming back, and it was coming back with interest. Rafa was a wall today, and it was difficult. It was breaking team's spirit, to be sure. He was just... He didn't know what to do. He kept looking to his box. He would make these amazing shots and then end up losing the point. You could just see the frustration. Well, in the third set, it was sort of more of the same uh, as the first set from team. His serving numbers were way down and his return point wins were way, way down. And at that point, Rafa started to turn it up. Rafa was serving fairly well, particularly on the first serve today. And the third set was pretty much of a shutout. But the first two sets, uh, the wins in the first two sets were based on single breaks by Rafa. So they weren't quite shutouts. There was no baked goods today, but it was a very credible, legitimate win for Rafael Nadal. He was the best player on the court today. I have been hoping that there'd be a player who would challenge Rafa, who could really give him a challenge. I don't think team was able to bring all he is capable of bringing today. He was not bringing what he did uh, throughout this whole tournament. Again, he just didn't sustain the same level of play. If he had, things would have gone differently. If he had, he would have won that first set. I promise you that. If he would have continued to hit and strike the ball and serve like he was for the rest of the tournament, for the preceding two weeks, he would have won that first set, and the whole tenor of this match would have likely been quite different. But... As it turns out, Rafa was able to snatch this thing away, and he deserves so much credit, folks. For those of you who are Nadal lovers and who find inspiration in Nadal, those of you for whom Nadal serves as great inspiration, he drives you to be the best at whatever it is you do, well then, congratulations. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations not only to Rafa, but congratulations to those of you who feel happy and inspired. And I hope Rafa inspires you to be great. I really do, because you know what? He inspired me today. He is a champion, and he inspired me. I feel good. I feel happy. Rafa was the best player on the court today. He is the undisputed king of clay, and he is nearly miraculous. As the announcers were saying, I think it was Jim Courier, he's like a cyborg. I mean, it was just totally phenomenal. It was just miraculous what he was doing on the court today. He truly saved the best for last. And that is the stuff of champions. So congratulations to Nadal. Congratulations to the Nadal fans. I hope you are inspired. I hope you're happy. I hope this makes your life happy and beautiful for the next few days. We have a lot of tennis coming up. Roger's going to be back. We've got the grass season. We've got reason to celebrate. The grass is coming. Roger's coming. The whole thing is coming into view. It's going to be pure fun. And I'm so excited to be sharing this great tennis with you guys. Drop a comment. I want to know your views on the match. 
Let's be civil. Let's be happy. Again, I'm happy for you. Let's do this. We've got so much great tennis coming up. So let's celebrate. Be well. Signing off from Boston.